morning, everyone. This is Li Ting. I came from Georgia Tech. First of all, I would like to thank all the coders for their great contribution. And today, I'm going to present um, a faster stream processing system called ELF. We will start from the motivation. Many stream processing applications tend to run concurrently on the same platforms. Here is an example. When you, when you are buying things at an e-commerce company like Amazon, your user activities like buys, clicks, likes are going to be logged by the company. And on, on the back end, there, is some, there are some applications concurrently running on these logs to generate business critical decisions, for example. A micro-promotion uh, application was analyzing users' clicks to get the most top K products has the most clicks and uh, mark them as a popular products. And then the, then the sales, like coupons, will be applied on these products to attract more people to buy. A second application was analyzing users' buy behaviors, like what products are, are usually bought together, and uh, generate a graph of connected components based on this behavior. And then this kind of graph can be given as online rec recommendations to other users, like if you buy this product, you may also like that product. And the third application, we call it a sale prediction application. For example, assume Angry Birds is very popular in the video game directory. Now the company wants to know if I, I launch a new product like Angry Pig, whether it will be successful or not. So what the company did is like, like that. They first asking the first application, the micro promotion application, to see whether Angry Birds is popular in the top K list. And then second is connect to the second application, the product boundary application, to see whether the Angry Birds boundaries are also popular or not. And then if they are both true, then the, then the company can predict the, that if I launch your products like Angry Pig, which is similar to Angry Birds, that may also gain success. Now next we see how uh, how this kind of job are going to be implemented in a real systems. This is the shared input. And recall our the micro promotion application to get a top K list. Since people's minds may change and the popularities of the products may change too. So it's it's later for this kind of results are uh, updated for every uh, for a period of time like every hour or every every day or every month. And in that case, a bench processing model will be very fit, will be very fit for this kind of job. And for the second for, for the second product boundary applications, we remember that it is a contacted components graph uh, which is iteratively up, up, updated. So a stream processing a uh, model with sliding windows will be fit well for this kind of job. And for the third application, it's just the user's queries. The, the user asks for query. What the user cares about is the latency. So the third application will require the latency need to be um, within milliseconds scale. In total, we found out that these jobs are very diverse with very delayed and they are concurrently running on the same set of input streams. And then how, and then how systems should be like to supporting these diverse jobs? We find out that first of all, the system needs to be very flexible. Flexible means first they need to support diverse jobs and uh, record these all three applications. They are streaming processing applications. They are not running for a while like every bench. They are actually running for a very long time like um, per day, per hours, or uh, even months. And it's later for a job creator who wants to change the job functions or job parameters at runtime or to coordinate with other jobs to get the insight like the third sale prediction application. 
And second feature of the system, that the system should be scalable, because our goal is to support concurrently running jobs on the same platforms. We want it, the system can be support hundreds of concurrent jobs with shared in inputs. And of course, we cannot satisfy the performance because for most of the stream processing applications, they want to processing the log in near real time with high throughput and low latency. And then let's, let's look at how the existing solutions are. On the left hand is the web server, which continually generating the live logs. And on my right hand is the end jobs that are running on these kind of logs. What are typically um, log processing systems uh, right now in company? Um, like in that the end jobs does not directly run on the web server's logs directly. They, they are, um, they're using some log collecting systems to collect in the logs uh, to a storage like HBase or HDFS. The log collecting systems like Facebook's Frooms or Looking's Kafka. And this, to gain the high throughput, these end jobs are running on the storage place. And there is a single master which tracking these jobs, gathering these jobs, and responsible for the job recovery and the failure recovery and the strata mitigation. And then it's, uh, we raise a question like that. Um, um, uh, if we can run the end jobs directly on the web server's logs, then we can gain low latency as well. So that comes the first, first um, uh, major point of our system design. We, uh, our system runs directly on the web server's tier. And if, if you look at the picture, you can see that our systems actually bypass the underlying log collecting systems and uh, other stream processing systems. And since our, since our goal is to handle diverse jobs with, with diverse data flows and uh, varied delays. So uh, we raised another question. Why, why not that we change the single master to many masters and let each master re uh, responsible for each job? And in that case, we can gain a lot of flexibility. And then we look at more details of how we change the uh, very traditional single master many worker structure to a many master many worker structure. Um, this is the web server. Uh, first of all, we organizing these web servers into a peer-to-peer -peer overlay. And each web, each web server will be assigned a, rather than assigned a load ID in a large address space. And the next, we hashing uh, the, applica uh, the application's name in a hashing value. And uh, the load ID whose clo memory is closing to this hashing value will be regarded as the master of this job. The next step, we make the web server, web servers which has the target streams send the join message to each job's master. And and the DHT routing guarantees that this, the number of hops is limited to log n, and the, the paths are converging eventually. We register all this, all this paths and then divide it into, divide it into this overlay into separated group, with each group is responsible for each job, and each group has its own master. That is how we implement it, how we change it from the single master to a many master. And so let's look at, into, look at into more details of the process before a law log is generated until the results is outputted. This is the um, basic overview of ELF software architecture. ELF consists of three logical layers. For the first layer is the, we call it a compressed buffer tree, which located into each web server's memory to pre-reduce the raw logs into k-value pairs. 
and the next, these distributed k-value pairs will be globally aggregated using a second layer's data structure. We call it a shared reduce tree, that is SRT, <coughs> to output the results. The third layer is open to the programmer. We gave, we, are, we gave some simple APIs to the programmer, which programmer can use them to implement, to guide the runs of different jobs, like with different bench sizes, different, different data flow models, and so on. And this is a simple example. On the left hand is the uh, logs in JSON formats. In, in and on the right hand is the ELF query language, which is similar to the SQL, which the programmer uses to, to design how the logs should be passed into k-value pairs. This, this example is about a micro-promotion. Um, uh, each line of logs will be generated into, uh, will be passed into product clicks, k value pairs. And then this, this log k value pairs will be pre reduced by the compro buffer tree in memory, in web server's memory. So on the left hand is the, uh, is the uh, logs that pass into k value pairs, like A1, B1, A1, B1, B1. And on the right hand is the pre-reduced results that's captured by the compress buffer tree. So what does compress buffer tree looks like? It is, some, it is something as like a, a hashing table. But difference is with hashing table, uh, it, it holds the historical status uh, key value pairs and compress them in, in memory. In that case, we are more com uh, memory efficiency and uh, can gain high throughputs when, when flashing it. CPT gives us three APIs to the programmer to use. Uh, the flash means give me the results. And the, what's interesting is the empty. Empty means clear all your history results. In, like for when you're doing a bench processing, your input needs to be fresh every bench. So then the programmer can use empty. Now we know the CBT is distributed in all web servers. So how to synchronize their execution? How to aggregate their uh, intermediate equivalent pairs? Then that comes to our second layer. It's the shell reduce tree. So what the shell reduce tree looks like? Recall in, in our previous slides, we divided an overlay into a lot of groups. Each group has its own um, master. So shell reduce tree is something like an aggregation tree, data centers, monitoring system, however different from the pre traditional aggregation tree. Our shell reduce tree can support uh, using, using different data structures for diverse jobs. For example, for the for the uh, micro promotion, which is like getting the top K, uh, it's using a single, uh, uh, a, a simple aggregation tree to aggregate the results. And for the, for the product boundary application, which is more like a word count, since the key, key space may be very large, so we use a factory-like structural aggregation tree to aggregate them. New in our system is that uh, first we uh, not only support support uh, the data flow from down to up, we also support the data flow from up to down. We use a very simple multicast uh, protocol to to send the feedback to all the workers. In that case, then uh, the master can tell the workers how you, uh, what you want to do. Like for example, the messages can be a synchronizing control message to let uh, all the CPTs to be flashed, or it can be the last iterations results that the workers can um, iterate on. It can be also a new job functions to uh, let each worker update. A second new uh, feature of our system is like, Lies in that we also support uh, coordinations between different jobs. Uh, you only need to know the job's name, then the routing protocol will help route your request to, to the job's master and get the results. And the, the latency is limited also to log and hops. 
And the third is about ELF's API for, for programmers to implement diverse jobs. This is a, uh, some simple, uh, simple example of how we implementing the micro promotion. Um, we will go quickly about the evaluation. Uh, our evaluation, um, the first evaluation results is about the performance latency. Uh, we use 16, uh, 16 machi machines and create thousands of agents, and we replay the real Twitter's, real Twitter stream for these logs. And uh, we compare it with um, uh, the related work like Storm and the Walmart's Muppets. <clears throat> the result shows that ELF outperforms for large windows. The reason lies in that the CPT's data structure generally have more, um, gives very efficient CPT fresh because that CPT holds a lot of history uh, status in their mind, in, in a tree structure. And the second result is uh, about uh, some new features of our systems we supporting runtime changes of job functions. And for different uh, kind of function change we, uh, we've, sorry. Uh, the result shows that uh, we can uh, change the job function within seconds scale. Even the very complex MapReduce fun function. And the third result is about uh, the scalability results. Um, so our test has used, used thousands of agents, and we deployed 2,000 jobs on, on top of that. Optimally, we want to see that each, each uh, web server has uh, like the average two or three uh, masters on top of it. And we find out that when deploying 2,000 SRTs, 19 percentage of the load has the, has the masters less than five. So which means that the master is scale well into the systems. And suppose the master is the most overloaded po sorry, overloaded um, uh, points that the, the system can scale well. And in conclusion, ELF supports good performance, scalability, and the job flexibility. And our future work is understanding more limitation of the ELF and uh, I think look at, uh, also look at task isolations. Thank you. Chuck from NEC Labs, Princeton. Uh, in your talk, it's not clear to me, are you running it on the web server itself? The ELF framework is running on the web server itself? Yes, it's so, running. Uh, so you're sharing the resources between what the web server is doing uh, and ELF jobs. Right, and the ELF is actually an agent, so uh, right now we place these agents into the web server, however it can be placed in other servers that's layered to the web servers too. Right, so are you worried about any fault tolerance issues? Uh, what? Fault tolerance. Yes, yes. Well, we didn't show it in the uh, results. We used the, because the, uh, our jobs is based on the shared reduced trees uh, all, um, peer on the peer-to-peer -peer overlay. So peer-to-peer -peer overlay itself already gave very good fault tolerance on, on that. Like when the job fails, it can dynamically construct another tree for that, for that job. Like the... Right. Thank you. Yes. Hi, um, Derek Murray from Microsoft Research. Um, could you tell me a little more about how you do the streaming sliding windows connected components for the product bundling? Um, uh, uh, more about the sliding windows? Oh, uh, yes. for, for the connected components in particular. Okay, yes. Yeah, um, uh, so like the... Um, Um, so the CPT has some operation called fresh, means that uh, it can fr uh, fresh the most up-to-date up results of the uh, previous uh, k-value pairs. So, uh, and it, uh, so for example, I, for every five seconds, I fresh it. 
So for the first seconds, I got the results of about zero to five. Um, zero to five, and uh, for the next five seconds, I got the result of zero to ten, and for the third interval, I got the result of about zero to uh, fifteen. And if you want a sliding window of five seconds, you can just um, uh, using the last interval minus the first interval, uh, the, but the minus means reduce. However, if you want to a sliding window of ten, then you 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 can make the uh, next next interval to minus the first interval. In that case, you can get the uh, sliding window of 10. In that case, we can uh, support ambulatory uh, sliding windows. OK, I think I have a couple more questions about that, but I'll take them offline. Thank you. OK, let's thank our speaker again.